We're covering 50 tech tips from the LS MTAP community here today. These tech tips were brought together mostly from the email listserv and from suggestions from the community. There is a handout in the GoToWebinar area that allows you to download the tech tips and it has links to all of the different tech tips in there. The tech tip handout will be available in the follow-up email after this. It will be put on the LSM tab uh, blog and it will be distributed to the email list. Uh, so a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Sark Rowe. I'm working with Northwest Justice Project on LSM tab. Um, this uh, presentation is made possible by a grant from the Services Corporation to Northwest Justice Project. We're doing a series of different webinars uh, this month and casual roundtable discussions uh, with the community, and we hope that you make it out to those. We've got the next three listed at the end of the presentation here. Um, there we go. First and second tech tip is if you are looking for anything uh, currently with regards to technology, uh, definitely search for whatever the company is plus um, COVID and see if they have particular offers to the community. A lot of different tech companies have either decided to give away their products, extend trials, or make other offerings. Uh, three of those are on this slide, um, which is uh, Adobe Sign has added a 90-day trial for new users through May 31st. Um, one password we're going to be talking about later, PandaDocs has a free option now available with unlimited signing um, and unlimited uh, uh, documents as part of that. Um, it, it's the best deal that I've seen so far on electronic signatures. Uh, we are doing an entire webinar next week on electronic signatures. We are looking for individuals that have experience with different particular programs and are willing to join that to talk for about five minutes about what they do for electronic signatures or electronic scanning. It's been one of the two most popular topics people have been looking for in the community. First area that we're looking at here is video. Since many things have been moved to video, one of the biggest questions that we've gotten is what options are out there, especially on the secure or even open source side of things. <coughs> Jitsi is a completely open source, fully encrypted, free conferencing uh, solution that is out there. Uh, it is very easy to set up a conference call with or a video conference with many people um, you head over to the website you type in a meeting name and it automatically gives you a dialing code pin number uh, and the ability to add uh, a, um, a password to it and be secure from there uh, i do have one minor warning with this is that you want to use a unique room name because when you type in a room name if that room name happens to be tests as i did the first time doing it um, you're dropped into the test room uh, so double check to make sure there's no other participants in your room then add a password right away and then share that information uh, with other individuals so that they can uh, enter into that um, if you would like it to be even more secure you can host it yourself there there's a very easy tutorial over on over on GitHub. Um, it is built on a Linux stack. Uh, it does not look that difficult to install. You definitely need an IT uh, experienced person, uh, but it takes the secure platform that they've already got put together and puts it entirely in your control. The cost estimates that people have given me with regards to using this uh, range from 20 to about $100 a month depending on uh, how often and how large you're using it although i wasn't anybody who's hosting it themselves um, none of those uh, cost estimates were from very small um, or very low use organizations uh, articles that we found out there do say that you could host it for around 20 to 40 dollars a month uh, depending on what your um, web program looks like so hosting it yourself is not free 
uh, but it does give you the added security that the video is no longer going through um, a third party in any way. Uh, Zoom has been in the news a lot with regards to um, security and Zoom has done two major security updates in the last 10 days. Uh, the one that we're focusing on here is adding the security panel to Zoom. It's very user friendly. It has the little shield icon down at the bottom. It, it allows you to um, control whether people can rename themselves, to lock the meeting, to enable a waiting room. Some of these features appear to be only for the pro version earlier and have been added across the board. Uh, there are articles over on Zoom's website where they've been talking about the larger security um, issues that have come forward and they've made some changes on those. Uh, we will uh, probably publish an article with some updates there, although there's this is moving so quickly. Uh, it's almost easier to check out some of the security professionals and Zoom site uh, directly. We've had a lot of discussion about this on the listserv. Um, both with concerns and then with the follow-ups. If you have any questions about um, Zoom, a lot of the community is using it, and the LSN Temp Listserv is a great place to get some more information about how individuals are using it. Um, Discord, I'm bringing up as another easy way to do um, audio chat. One of the features that I really like about it, besides the fact that it is free and very easy to add password controls, uh, lock particular chat channels, is that they just added noise suppression on April 10th, uh, which helps cut out some of the background noise that's there. And a lot of individuals working from home do end up with some background noise and mics themselves also a lot of the time individuals do not have higher quality mics so the sound quality with regards to their free chat um, has been improving significantly recently <clears throat> the last one with regards to video they've got here is much more on the um, casual side it is marco polo one of the important things not to lose sight of here is those social connections when we're all working remotely marco polo is not a video chat it is video messaging you record a short message and send it over to someone else uh, it does have a very good reputation it's extremely easy to use if you're looking away looking for a way to casually connect with friends that doesn't require their immediate attention, but still has the depth of video. Uh, Marco Polo is a very good app for doing that. Uh, video capture has also been something that has come up a lot, uh, especially when individuals are trying to do um, remote work and put together work processes or share them with a team. Um, Loom is a Chrome plugin that is free for the Chrome plugin version and allows you to record your camera, record the screen, or record screen and camera um, along with microphone audio. It is extremely easy to use, very low weight, um, and has a wonderful price point of free. Um, they do have a full version that is a desktop version that adds a bunch of other features. Uh, but if all you're trying to do is record your screen, audio, and camera, this is a great way to go about doing it. Number nine and 10 here is Open Broadcast Studio um, to Facebook. So this is screen capture plus webcam, or you can have multiple videos. And Facebook Live now supports having a feed stream go to it. So Several different programs have been providing services, especially educational services, via Facebook. And the best that I've seen out there definitely added more than just a talking head webcam. So they took the traditional slides or information that you're providing to the public and added with um, OBS the resources, links, information, visuals, even court forms to show people. 
Uh, it really ups the production value at a cost of free on the software side. OBS is, I would put it at a two out of five for complicated. It's not very complicated at all to use, about 30 minutes or so. Uh, you can set it up and there's some great walkthroughs online. Uh, the tip sheet includes a setting up OBS with Facebook stream specific article to show you how to do that. I strongly recommend that for live streams. Our next topic area is collaboration. This is the area that we have the most overall suggestions for tools, although a lot of them were the same tool. There's definitely one tool that people really love in this current environment. Um, the first tip that we've got here is Slack, and we're adding this uh, partially because of the brand new integration that has showed up with Box. Um, Box is a online storage and system similar to uh, Dropbox or OneDrive. Uh, it has very good security features. It integrates with some of the uh, case management systems in the private sector and is one of the best online ways to share uh, files out there. Slack has just added integration. Uh, they've also upped their feature set recently. Uh, the free version archives 10,000 messages, your 10,000 most reached, uh, your paid versions, uh, your archives increase significantly, I believe even to unlimited. Uh, but on the paid version, they've also added uh, team voice and team video. Uh, so if you're looking for somewhere to track and keep things together uh, while also providing that team video to voice at a low cost. Um, Slack is definitely one of those options currently and the integration with the box adds a very nice security with regards to file sharing. Number 13 here, this was the most suggested tip uh, when we crowdsource these from the community. A large number of organizations are using Microsoft Teams. I think we could do a half hour, hour webinar on Microsoft Teams, although other organizations have done those. And we've got some links in the education materials to basic 101, 102 of Teams and the feature sets that are out there. Uh, this has many of the same similar features that Slack does, but integrates with your entire Microsoft environment. Uh, chat channels and have the ability to cut down on the need for massive email. One of the most impressive things that I've seen about in using Teams is the way that some people will move over to creating online conversations instead of mass emailing. Uh, the search functionality is much better and it has wonderful integration. Creating those separate channels for chat, uh, strongly recommended. And both with regards to Slack and Teams, I recommend having a water cooler informal discussion chat area uh, because that is another important way to keep people uh, engaged and to provide them a little bit of stress relief in this current time. On the project management side, uh, Kanban Flow has come up more than once. It is a free, easy to use, agile kind of project management system that allows you to keep track of tasks. It has what you need to do, what you're working on currently, the progress and the completion of it. Um, you can assign tasks to individuals or to multiple people. There's comments with regards to each task. Uh, this is a very similar system um, to Trello, uh, which was another one that was suggested, another very strong free project management system. Uh, there are advanced features uh, beyond the free model, but the functionality of both Trello and Kanban Flow uh, is very strong, very easy to use does not require any um, tech background to set up. So excellent project management, um, very lightweight. Um, on the more complicated project management side of things, there was the suggestion of Monday. Uh, Monday allows for 
uh, many more options, um, setting up priority, time estimates, directly attaching files, um, and a little bit easier interface for looking at what's going on. Um, dividing your staff into different teams is also an option directly in Monday. Uh, it does have a steeper learning curve, the Kanban flow, but it has a significantly larger uh, feature set as part of it. And I've seen firms use this to create a different board for each case and then assign different case members or legal or legal assistants, different pieces of that, and then use this for check-ins on a weekly kind of stand-up uh, meeting. Uh, having those type of meetings where people can both view the online project management system and have video chat uh, definitely helps with the engagement and ability for people to follow along as opposed to video only. Next section we're looking at is learning online. This is both um, for staff and then also uh, for the public more generally. Uh, TechSoup. Uh, which hopefully everybody here is familiar with, has amazing resources online for discounts with regards to software, uh, which most of us know about. Uh, something that I was not aware of until it was suggested by the community is that they also have a nonprofit uh, response track in their educational area called TechSoup Courses. Uh, that includes about eight different courses for helping nonprofits move online and doing remote work. It is all available for free uh, to the public. Two of those modules is a Teams 101 and a Teams 102 tutorial that are part of it, um, which is super timely considering what we're talking about. Uh, quality content. Uh, easy to follow, targeted really at the nonprofit community. Uh, definitely recommend always checking out TechSoup, but in particular, the TechSoup courses, which are available uh, for free at this point and have a specific one for what we're going through currently. Uh, Pluralsite.com was one that was suggested by the community that I had not heard of. Um, it is a website with about 7,000 plus of videos organized in how-to courses. The content is extremely high quality, well-produced. It covers a gamut of different areas, but there's many that are on the practical tech outreach, business analytics side of things, uh, type of trainings that they normally charge a significant amount for. They're free through April. Uh, they um, for example, this UX strategy fundamentals course uh, that I spent a little time looking at in the research uh, was very well produced, very easy to follow. I strongly recommend checking it out if you're looking for high quality courses. It's nice that they are all vetted. Occasionally when you cruise around YouTube or other places, uh, you'll end up with some lower quality stuff, but they've created a, a place with uh, reputable well-produced videos. This is a, one of the classic suggestions that were given out here. Um, TechLearning.com, um, although they go by Tech and Learning, is a old school classic blog uh, that covers the intersection of technology and learning. Uh, these blog posts are short, simple, to the point, uh, less than 1,500 words, very, very useful. Uh, in particular, the second that I uh, logged on, I saw a article uh, on how to teach for home uh, pain free. The suggestions in it um, actually inspired some of the suggestions later on when we go to working from home technology, but just creating a workspace that is uh, er ergonomic and helpful um, in this time like just very, very practical. Uh, they've done a pretty good job also of categorizing and sharing some of the other free offerings that are out there with regards to technology and online technology learning tools. 
The target audience for this website is definitely uh, educators. It's not necessarily legal services, but there is a lot of useful stuff that comes out of uh, this site that is generally applicable. And it's just very easy to read with solid use of visual, visuals and plain language throughout it. Next one here, I uh, didn't know about until last week uh, when I attended a online um, meetup over family law. Uh, one of the um, firms that I've worked with um, had a physical meetup and meetup has added features to put all of the meetups online. Uh, within their uh, events, uh, you can make anything online as the location and you can add a direct link to your registration or video conference things service. Uh, meetup is still actively being used. Uh, I know several uh, organizations have used it uh, for outreach, especially if there's something that's done on a regular basis, quarterly or annually. Uh, it is probably the second easiest way to provide events um, outside of Facebook events, but it is <clears throat> the easiest for reaching an online community that is different than a particular page's friends network because people actively search there. So I love their support of doing events online. They've made it easy. Uh, the family law one that I attended last week was extremely popular. I'm attending another um, online meetup uh, with regards to COVID and family law specific to Washington State uh, this Thursday. Uh, just And it came to me through the meetup app as a suggestion. So I definitely recommend this for reaching out to a different community than your Facebook page may already have or your social media. Next section we're gonna look at here is home office suggestions. This is one of the biggest areas that has shown up in informal or water cooler talks is how do you stay comfortable, take care of your health and put together a good uh, home work environment. Uh, one of the biggest suggestions, and I went out and fixed this after my first week at home, is finding a chair that is comfortable. Um, something that has armrests, the heights adjustable so that you can get proper posture and a keyboard, uh, back support depending on your back. Uh, the one suggestion that's that almost everyone had that I talked to that is difficult in this period um, is to try the chair out if possible. Um, the exchange policies are very good for online sites currently. Um, some of the stores um, will still let you come in in very small numbers and um, check them out and then order and have one sent directly, but it will make a huge difference in your work life. Uh, individuals I know who have picked up chairs recently, normally been spending about the 75 to 225 range. Uh, you can spend as much as uh, you want on something like this, uh, but the return on investment for one's health, um, it is worth finding something that you are comfortable in during this time period. Um, another suggestion, this one came off of the LSM tech list directly, was consider noise canceling headphones. Um, especially if you're working in a uh, louder environment, it will help you a lot with focus. Uh, noise canceling headphones typically run about $60 to about $400. The biggest difference is the sound quality of the audio. Um, and uh, I've definitely used some of the less expensive. Uh, the middle ones there are a Sennheiser that's about $70. Uh, the noise canceling is great and the music um, sound is is actually pretty good for the price. Um, it is not a like high bass, high um, uh, audiophile, even though it's from Sennheiser, but it is high quality and works in that functional way. Um, I've heard very good things about um, Apple Beats noise canceling also, which are around the 110, 120. Uh, the more time you're spending on online, conferences, the more that I definitely uh, recommend looking into these. 
Um, and I appreciate the suggestion from the list, sir. I never thought that I would suggest buying a home shredder to anyone. Um, and we've got several law offices here in Washington state that still practice in areas where you are printing and mailing in. Electronic filing is not everywhere. Fortunately, a lot of courts are looking at electronic filing right now, uh, but as I've got remote interns and um, staff uh, getting someone a shredder so that they can destroy things that they printed out that they're planning on mailing in is worth considering. Uh, I had some bad experiences with those that are at the six to eight sheet range. Uh, um, the 10 sheet has worked really well. I hope that we move to an area where electronic filing is always an option and we don't need to make this type of a suggestion in the future, but many counties still have uh, mail in as a primary way of filing or difficult electronic filing systems. The next suggestion here uh, is a docking station. Uh, if you're using a laptop in your home environment, uh, laptop keyboards can tend to be a little small, less comfortable. Um, a docking station often provides you with extra uh, ports for USB in case you need an external keyboard, an external mouse. Uh, they often will let you hook up to a larger uh, video or use your laptop with dual screens. Some laptops have very limited storage. Uh, there's two ways to deal with that. One is offsite storage, which I definitely recommend on a firm level, uh, but this could be a way to also uh, do uh, personal storage for extra items that are there. Uh, Ethernet port, Many laptops do not have direct Ethernet ports anymore, uh, and an Ethernet port can be put through a docking station, uh, and then the power to support everything that's running off of it. The cost range on these uh, ranges from $50, $60 to as much as you want to pay. Um, to get, it's really about the features that you need do you need that extra USB? Would a second monitor be useful? Uh, the storage second monitor or higher quality monitors are some of the more expensive features. Uh, the basic ones will definitely work for just getting those extra ports and creating uh, a more usable workspace also. One of the most entertaining suggestions that we got from the LSM tab email listserv was phone books. Uh, I had no idea what they're talking about. I followed up. Um, and what they were really talking about was footrests. Uh, they also recommended old law school books as something to make sure that your feet um, are at a level um, straight place and that you're comfortable. Um, adjustable footrests do cost a little more than free phone books, uh, but are much easier to use uh, and cost a lot less than legal textbooks from law school. Uh, Make sure that you've got an IT procedure in place that encourages or requires individuals if they're using uh, personal devices at home to create a work specific uh, profile. Uh, if the computer is shared by others, this just segregates most of the items that they would have access to. Uh, in the tip sheet, we've got a how to set up second accounts on Windows and on Mac. Uh, in both cases, it takes about three minutes and no tech experience is needed. But just having that segregation uh, for files uh, with a lockout when you walk away, especially if you're in a shared space uh, with roommates or other family members, it just helps protect the confidentiality and security for the individuals that uh, you're serving. Oh, one of the more practical suggestions that we got was the ring doorbell. Uh, working from home, I've definitely experienced, especially since I live in a house with several different people, uh, the number of deliveries that we get is very large. The doorbell rings often, realizing if it's a package being dropped off or if you can continue to just work and not worry about it uh, is very, very useful. 
Now, this was mentioned at the beginning and is well worth checking out. They have removed their trial limits. It's a password management program that is very popular. It is used across many different platforms. Uh, they securely store your passwords on their server and the key for encryption is stored on your device. They have a, a master password that is used for uh, accessing the plugin and getting access to all your passwords. And most importantly, they've got team sharing options that allow you to easily share passwords. Uh, one password I checked out this last week after it was suggested by someone on the list. Um, it is easy to use and I was happy using it. For signatures, we're doing an entire webinar on scanning and digital signatures uh, next week, which is why we don't have a huge number of suggestions here. Uh, this is one that came up as a question from last week's webinar uh, and someone wanted us to kind of look into of uh, the security background of it um, with regards to some new rules that were being passed in Oregon State. Um, what I liked about this particular sign program was it was the fastest and easiest uh, to sign your first document. The sign up procedure uh, basically walks you through your first document that you're signing and they do 10 free signatures uh, per month. Uh, their $7 a month option has unlimited documents. Uh, this is nowhere near as feature rich as DocuSign or uh, some of the other uh, leaders in the industry, but it is extremely easy to use and extremely well priced for online documents. Um, they've got a whole page relating to their compliance with GDPR rules and how they treat your client information. I would definitely check that out and whatever your state local rules are. Uh, the Oregon rule was very interesting in that um, it was very broad and it allowed you to add a process that verifies that that signature um, was actually made by the right person. Uh, so if you emailed out a link, they sent it back. Uh, there's some concern that you that that email could have been intercepted or somebody else could have signed it. Um, and the Oregon rule added that if you do like a, a check in with the person uh, to verify that they signed it, uh, that that would count for authentication. Um, each jurisdiction has different rules around um, e-signatures. Uh, we I'm still aware of one jurisdiction that requires a separate rules declaration for it, but most of the uh, jurisdictions are looking at ways to make e-signatures easier and cutting down on some of the barriers of access there while still providing authenticity specifically. Uh, the next uh, one that we've got here, this piece of technology, Ring Central, could have been in many different sections. Several people recommended this from the LSM tab listserv. If you have larger questions about Rain Central, uh, definitely feel free to uh, email me or get on the listserv and ask about it. Um, the reason that we're putting this in this area is that uh, Rain Central has great um, internal facts features. And another question that has come up several times on the listserv in the last two weeks has been what are people using at a discussion over uh, e-faxes and Ring Central has that built in. Um, they do have a, a longer trial period that has been created with regards to COVID-19 and specifically they have an NPO page that includes some consulting to get things set up as part of that free offering. So if you've been considering Ring Central, uh, it is definitely worth checking out. And there are lots of people in the community that can help you out. For individuals that don't want to put together an entire communication system and the need to do a few hundred faxes at most, <laughs> red fax is a very easy to use uh, lightweight 
um, online fax system that uses their service to take your documents and send it to the destination or to take the documents that are coming in and send them uh, to your email. Uh, tried setting it up and it was very easy to set up. Uh, the cost point, I believe it was 500 documents or so for about $5 a month initially. Uh, your, so for lower volume, uh, this is an easy way to deal with just a few faxes a month uh, from an external perspective instead of a larger communication tool. Quick break here for some suggestions with regards to staying sane during this time period. Uh, two books that I strongly recommend when, since we're spending so much time on our computers and so much time on our phones um, are The Attention Merchants, The Epic Scramble to Get Inside Our Heads uh, by Tim Wu, uh, NYU professor. It, it explains a lot of the psychology and economics behind how cell phones are grabbing our attention and using uh, random reward schedules and psychology uh, to create this codependence. As all of us are moving to a more digital environment in this time, uh, it's a very good read. And on the more practical side of dealing with technology and being inundated with technology um, is Cal Newport's Digital Minimalism. Uh, it sounds a little odd in this time period when everything is going online, uh, but it has wonderful suggestions about thinking about your use of technology in a, a strategic manner and choosing uh, which tools take up your time. Uh, his idea of a short-term purge and then reintroduction is not possible at this current time period, given how much work-related stuff we have to do through technology, uh, but he very consciously talks about your choices and making sure that you find um, time that is outside of that digital space that's trying to grab your attention. And one of the reasons that we added those two books uh, was this wonderful suggestion that came from a listserv um, called Daywise that allows you to control your notifications. One of the things that cell phones are really bad at because it doesn't help them grab your attention is allowing you to control your notifications. I often spend time trying to hunt down a single setting to get one thing changed on my phone to get back my time. And Daywise does a wonderful job of shutting down those alerts and those noises and allowing you to filter instead of just shutting everything off. You can choose some messages to have a high level of importance to them, and you can choose other messages that it saves the notifications until after or it saves the notifications until 8 a.m. the next morning because you are in off time and those are non-emergency work related. I highly recommend checking it out so that you can take more control over your time in this extremely online digital age. Our next suggestions are a little more on the techie side. Uh, the email list serve and the community ranges from individuals who uh, have a little bit of interest in technology to those that are IT professionals. Next few suggestions are a little more on the IT professional side. Um, having a system that allows you to take over remote users' computers while doing IT support um, is absolutely essential in this current time period. We've got two different suggestions that came from the listserv. First is ConnectWise, uh, remote control uh, for your user's computer. Uh, there is a free version for one user that is easy to use. Uh, the full version is $19 a month. Um, it is just very, very useful when troubleshooting computers. Um, they have a lot more extra features on there and it's a much broader program, the, but it is rather easy to use uh, if, from a technologist's perspective. Uh, 
the additional suggestion that we've got here um, is remote access through splash top um, another easy to use multiple different devices um, easy to set up for remote access uh, we'll have links to both of those in the tip sheet document um, Check them out and compare them if you're looking for a way to do IT remotely more efficiently. Uh, in the same category, we've got an education system, which is Microsoft Learn, which is entirely free. Any of the technologies you're looking at to set up, or if you just want to improve your skills and work on certificates, uh, those are there. Uh, they range from getting started using something like um, Power BI, uh, which is applicable to a larger non-tech community, individuals that are doing business analytics. Uh, it's a great tool. Most of their tutorials are um, a little more advanced. They're targeted at techies, which is why it ended up in the IT section. Uh, but their, any of their What Is series or their beginner um, is useful for anybody using a new product. The What is Microsoft 365 um, is only 11 minutes and it gives a nice introduction. If you're moving from Microsoft on-premise in this time period to Microsoft 365, definitely recommend checking it out and taking ideas or tips from it uh, and adding it um, to staff. One of the more techie suggestions that we got was Microsoft uh, Direct Access. Uh, direct Access to put it in simple terms, is basically a leveled up, easier to use uh, virtual private network. But instead of connecting to a single user, you connect to an authenticated machine so that it is always on and it is what they call a seamless, but I would say more uh, behind the scenes and less in the uh, way of the user. Uh, it's for domain joined Windows clients. Uh, the setup of it um, is very easy and it's free with Windows Server. Uh, so if you're looking for a enterprise wide alternative to VPNs and you're in a Windows environment, um, I've heard at least two very good reviews from the community and looking through and researching this tip, um, the community is very supportive of it. There are very, very positive reviews. Another thing, another area where you can get help off the listserv um, if this is the direction that you decide to go. Uh, so our next area here is security and backups. Um, on the security side, um, there's been about a $50 million investment recently in Signal uh, from one of the founders of WhatsApp, of all things. Um, and I believe a nonprofit that he has, uh, but part of that investment is improving the security, which is already one of, if not the most secure messaging platform out there. Uh, but they're also spending some time improving the usability to make it easier for people to use and more uh, readily adoptable by a larger population. Uh, Signal started out being extremely secure, but not very usable or very aesthetic. The aesthetics and the usability are definitely improving. It is a product that puts privacy first and foremost at the beginning. Um, they have voice and video calls. They have the ability to send disappearing messages, and they have solid group chat features. Highly recommend checking it out, and it is definitely improving on the usability and the security has always been and is still top notch. Uh, recommend strongly having an antivirus. Uh, Sophos Home is free, um, has been and is easy to use. Uh, I would recommend an antivirus on an enterprise level. Um, also that will be covered in our security uh, webinar coming up in May, uh, but make sure if using home devices, definitely have an antivirus that is available as part of your checklist. Part of the goal in putting together these tech tips for this webinar is that it should cover broadly most of the major things you need to think about 
for working remotely and doing legal services remotely. Uh, you can use it as a bit of a checklist. Do I have these things? Do I not? Uh, which is why we also included the antivirus, even though it's a very basic tip there. Uh, a backup system that allows for external backup. Uh, Carbonite has been strongly suggested by members of the community um, and used by organizations. The biggest tip that I have here is test your backup systems. I cannot tell you the number of times that the cost of recovery has skyrocketed but because the backup system didn't work correctly or it took a few days to get going or they had to do data recovery with the backup system. I uh, had that happen sadly more than once in the community and uh, with clients that I've worked with um, through LSMTAP. Uh, so during this time, I know that there's a press on our resources because the need is growing significantly but carve out a weekend and test some backup systems that you have in place or implement a new backup system, give it a month and then test it. This is gonna save you a lot of pain and suffering later uh, when things crash or if you get hit by ransomware or a virus hits, uh, having that backup is essential. With regards to backing up your cell phones, this question has come up a lot. Um, G Cloud has a free option that is will back up up to 10 gigabytes um, and lets you choose what to back up. Um, it is very easy to use. It is not by Google, although when I uh, searched for it on Google, um, a Google ad for Google was the first search result. It was the second link. Uh, I give it a try on my cell phone um, and very easy to use. Um, 10 gigs does not sound like a lot for a phone, but if you exclude your photos and your music, um, it should cover all of your documents, all of your essential items there. So choosing what you back up um, is important when using a tool like this. Practical tip, um, more than one person who has taken our suggestions of using a um, strong password system and a password manager have lost their master password and lost access to all of their passwords. This is an old paper system suggestion. Take your master password, write it down on a piece of paper, put it somewhere nowhere near your desk put it in your closet with photos don't mark what it is just have it there and know where it is i actually took and took that one password and shared it with uh or put it somewhere secure and then shared that location of where it was secure uh, with someone else in case i forgot that location it's just essential to know. Now, where I put that was locked up so someone could just get into it, um, but as long as it's away from your computer and not easily found, um, it is more secure at that point. Password managers are amazing. Losing your, pa your master password is the absolute worst, which is why I've got another suggestion to help with this problem, is generate one time passwords that will let you do a recovery or re-enter the system. LastPass, which is one of my favorite password systems, will let you generate three one-time strong passwords. And with that, they can only be used to log in once. It notifies you when they are used. Um, I take one of those, hide it in a secure location, and then I've taken a trusted colleague and said, hey, um, if I ever need this, you've got it, but then I know if it's been used. It's not like giving them your actual master password because you get notified and it can only be used once. But it is essential for recovery for these disposable passwords. Uh, next group of suggestions before we move into suggestions from the community here is uh, how and ways to improve getting the word out. 
to the community during this time period. Uh, the Transcends Legal Icon project, I strongly recommend individuals checking out. Uh, they're free to use under Creative Commons by uh, non-commercial, non-derivative uh, non license, which basically means you can use them as long as you give the creator credit um, and you don't change them. The idea is to have standard, uh, visually intuitive icons for the legal world. Uh, these are very easy to use. Strongly recommend them for videos and for print publications that you're creating, putting on your website also. Uh, second thing is, if you create a video during this time period to help people out with regards to COVID, and I've seen a lot of individual programs doing this, uh, put those videos up on YouTube. <laughs> Don't just take the um, Zoom meeting video or a plain video and throw it up on your website. You will get 10 times more hits by putting them up on YouTube, even if you don't currently have a YouTube channel. It, um, Northwest Justice Project did a Do I Still Have to Pay My Rent um, video that came out a week ago. It already has 936 views, much higher than their average for one week and larger than their subscriber count. It is being shared and other people are viewing it. I know someone else in the community that created a similar video that was specific to a smaller geographic or uh, to a different geographic region, not smaller, a different state. They just put it up on their website. They've gotten almost no views at this point. Uh, you need to go to where the community is and share those awesome new resources you're creating with the community more broadly. Uh, this is an older suggestion, but people asked for specifically some easier suggestions for getting started with new technology. Uh, the Quick Start Guide in the Creator Academy is great. It will get you the basics of a YouTube channel set up in less than an hour, short, easy to use videos. All of these course materials are free. I uh, strongly recommend checking them out. They're not aimed at a nonprofit community specifically, uh, but they do have great practical tips on the marketing and outreach side and just set up overall. The last suggestion that I'm putting forward, or actually these all come from the community, um, is Unsplash um, for coming up with amazing images for sharing. The Unsplash images do not require attribution, but I strongly encourage you to attribute. The quality of the images is just amazing. It is a curated site with beautiful images that can be shared, used on your social media. Um, it looks a lot like a, a museum collection or a well-curated stock photo site. Uh, the, the quality just adds a lot two presentations. So now that we went through 47 tech tips in uh, 58 minutes, uh, we've still got a little bit, little bit of time here. Uh, please uh, type into the question box or uh, raise your hand. We would love to hear any other suggestions. I did get three more tips from the community. First, group me for group text messaging, a nice informal way to connect with staff or to put together groups of individuals that want to knowledge share via text messaging. Second, we've got ScanBot for a phone scanner that is Mac and Android. We've also got Philips Speech Live for voice to text with human review or automated. The human review aspect is extremely nice uh, for editing work product. Thank you to everybody on the LSM tap email list. Uh, this was, these were great suggestions from the community and this could not have been put together without all of your suggestions. Thank you so much.